Welcome back to the channel. It's time to make our table for the fish cave. Let's get to work. We're gonna take this nasty old reclaimed lumber, we're gonna sand it down, smooth it out, make a nice smooth surface for our table. I'll also mention it's 107 out here. I think my lungs are sweating. Hopefully there's no asbestos or anything crazy on this wood I'm about to dust up. I've already got enough problems with my face. wood I was scraping it oh there's a bunch of stuff on there I'm praying to God please Jesus that it wasn't asbestos I'm not sure what that stuff looked like it could have been some lead based uh, stuff back in the day that was used on some of this flooring maybe some you know, it's old so you know I see all those asbestos commercials on TV it's like hi I'm Jim Adler Come get your mesothelioma. I hope I don't have a bunch of comments after this video saying that it is asbestos. Because I don't think this mask is really OSHA approved. Put a lot of love into this table. This is going into the bass cave. I'm trying to put some pride into my work here. Make it extra special for you guys. Again, I am not an expert. Uh, I did not go to school for this. I watched a few YouTube videos and I got a few buddies. I'm literally just uh, going to Home Depot, getting some sanding equipment. If this thing turns out good, then you know for sure that you too can make a sweet outdoorsman style, old farmhouse style, whatever you want to call it, old wood table out of reclaimed wood. You can find it at on people's properties. So if you got the time and the energy and you practice your ABCs, always be creating, which I've been doing here lately, here at the treehouse. It's actually, it's, it's uh, always be creating, always be crafting, and always be fixing, ABFs as well. If I can do it, you can do it, and it's time to move on to the next step. The next step is to clean the bird doo-doo and the cobwebs off of these other boards that I found. So these are gonna be the outline of our tabletop and they're gonna show a lot. So I want them to look good. So I've already taken the time with the old pencil and I've sketched out everything and done some mathematics. It's always my worst subject. The longest part of our table is gonna be five feet. Even for being old and being out in the sun and just drying out for over a hundred years, it is still heavy and thick. Lots of cool little character marks on it too. So this is gonna sit stick out like this. Take my brush and then put a stick on it. I've got more push. At this point, is there anything else? Let me know in the comments that could do this quicker. Like, could you put a brush on a drill? Does that sort of thing exist? I feel like I'm really doing some serious manual labor on this thing. If I take a sander to it, it's just like refining the dust even more into it. I still have to brush it. So what is that next step after that? I'm not pretending like I know. Well, I'm sitting here asking y'all. I mean, obviously by the time you're watching this, I'm gonna figure something out. Or I'm just gonna keep pushing this brush. That is a deadly looking spider that just landed on me, by the way. That's the other thing you get with reclaimed wood. Nasty bugs. I'm gonna take some compressed air right here and I'm gonna blow a lot of the dirt out. Need to find a little bit better technique than the brush that I've been using. Let me show you that. This is the brush that I've been using right here. It's a stiff uh, brass, it looks like brass bristle brush. It's a little too rough. It takes away the character of the wood. Uh, and if I hit it with some heavy grit sandpaper, it's gonna take the, the characters off of it a little bit, but what it's also gonna do, it's not gonna get down there into that dirt where it is. This will get down there into that dirt, but it's just too aggressive. That is some air right there. Ooh, that is some pressure. On this side, it's not as grainy, and you can really see the color of the wood changing. It's beautiful. Okay, so I lightly hit it 
with that 100, I'm gonna have to do this on all these pieces, but it just brought out the color. So I went ahead and I hit the corners a little bit more because that's probably gonna be where my arms are gonna be resting on the table where I'm showing you guys different fishing stuff and talking about life. So this is the part where I, I want it to be kind of soft, roll over, so I hit the edges with that, but just, I don't want to take this away. You know, the old saw, the old saw marks, just that roughness, that's going to be the, the top edge of the table right there, so I want it to have that cool character. So I'm going to have to complete that process on the rest of these. I got four of those. We're going to cut them, and then we're going to break out something I've never done before. It's supposedly really good for beginner woodworkers or just people that are trying to get some projects done in a quick amount of time. That's called using a Craig jig. My buddy Lance showed it to me. It's great for joining corners, so that's the next step. This is a multiple day project, but I'm taking my time with it. I want to make sure it's right, and I think you guys are going to like the end result. Hey, Mr. Kitty. Hey, don't worry, guys. He's dead. Caught him on a trot line. I'm about to clean this catfish on this old piece of wood before I get to restoring it, so I'm going to give it one last dirty job before it's all nice and pretty. Thank you, Jesus, for this overcast. I think I actually felt a, a raindrop as well. What a blessing from this Texas heat it is right now, guys. It's giving me motivation. So what I'm learning here, the way to treat this really old wood, if you guys are looking to just do some simple home project and maybe use some reclaimed wood or you know, just spruce up your man cave a little bit. This one came, it was in rough condition. And what I did is I went through a series of brushes. I finally learned that this four inch bristle brush is really good. Put that on an electric drill. You gotta be careful with that trigger. It'll get kind of out of hand in a hurry. It really helps rip out that deep dirt within the cracks of this wood and brings out its old natural color. So I've got four of these really long pieces. I've definitely got enough to do the tabletop. These are about 10 foot a piece. It's gonna be five feet wide. So this is gonna be two of my pieces right here. So I gotta just clean this up a little bit more. Show you guys how I do that. Time to restore all this natural beauty. Probably going to be the most important cut that I'm going to make. This is the main piece of wood, the longest one running down the table, measuring twice, probably three or four times, and then cutting once because I only have one piece that has this type of character. It's almost exactly 10 feet. I can't screw up because the table is going to be five foot. This is the main cut. That's what I'm trying to get at. Can't screw this up. Wow. There's a big split in the middle of this as well, and I didn't want it to crack, but this thing cut through it nicely. Now I can have a beer. Beautiful piece of wood. Now I'm gonna hit this with some 220 grit sandpaper, kind of a finishing sandpaper. I'm gonna get these rough edges off of here. Pretty much how I want it. I'm gonna do a very fine 400 grit sandpaper when it comes time to put a little fish finish on it. But for right now, I'm just gonna smooth these corners out and then we'll move on. So we got those old boards cut. They're looking absolutely fantastic. Can't wait to finish them up and just put it in the man cave and smell it. Best part about this is just knowing what we are taking and turning it into. And I'm watching it transform. I'm excited for the before and after. Super important part now as well is taking our other two pieces of wood. And I'm choosing this one because of all the character marks in it. You guys can probably see some of that action. Still a little bit of cleaning up to do on that. The problem with dealing with some of this old wood is that it's not exactly accurate. For example, this two by four, which is typically an inch and a half uh, in thickness, you know, it's range from an inch and a sixteenth, inch and an eighth, maybe a little bit over. I'm also grinding on it a little bit. It's been over a hundred years. I mean, things are happening. And then I've got these cool old floorboards that I'm using for the top. And those will lap in together. They'll fit in together, but a lot of the, the lapping portion is broken off, so some is kind of warped, and 
so you're gonna get expansion. What I'm gonna go on is that these are kinda gonna be around an inch and a half. Uh, eight of the boards together is gonna make 26 inches because they're an inch and a quarter wide. Add that up with a couple of these, which we're gonna turn this way. So inch and a half plus inch and a half, three inches, which equals, you guessed it, 29 inches. We got plenty of room to play with this one so we can make an error or two, but we're not gonna. And I'm hoping that this wood fits together nicely and that's gonna equal 26 inches. Right now it's at 26 and an eighth, so I get a little bit of room to play shape down. As you can see, it doesn't all fit together perfectly. But we're gonna make it that way. It's just gonna take some effort. Let's make the cuts. All right, we are done with sawing for today. clean up brushwork on these smaller pieces. Look at the color change in that wood after cleaning up with that brush. You look at that and go, oh that sucks. That thing's all dried out. You give it a little love and attention. And it is a beaut. It'll get even darker the more I brush it. We're gonna finish up with just a hair bit of sanding with well, that 220 grit. I don't even know how many days this has been on this project, guys, but all I know is it's gonna be worth it. It's gonna look fantastic when I get done. Sun's going down in Texas. Don't have much time left here today. We're gonna to smooth this baby out, and then it's gonna be time to put it together. Well, fishing freaks, woodcrafters, and everyone else that's here, I wanted to close this video out just letting you know that there is a table and it has been just about done. I've never done a big project like this and filmed it. And what I found over the course of many, many days is I ended up recording everything that I could and I ended up with about 400 gigs of footage. Now my typical fishing video normally runs about 30 to 60 gigs of footage. And that's fishing a whole day with multiple cameras. So just to give you a comparison, there's a lot to go through here. Getting the wood, preparing it, building it, Figure out, I don't know what I'm doing. The stanky boards that look like this. Researching, asking for help, and then just going through each step, failing until I get it exactly right in the way I want it. It's cut into my outdoor time and I haven't made as much fishing videos lately because of this table. But I gotta tell you guys, working on this kind of stuff, I love it. I'm into it. So many wood projects to do at the treehouse. It's a helpful skill to have to learn all this woodworking craft. I want you to go ahead right now and let me know what you think about woodcraft in the comments. Do you think it ties in with the outdoors? I certainly think it does. I've got people already reaching out, wanting to do woodcraft, collaborators, other people with woods, metals, other things. There's things happening here. But let me know in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe right here to the channel, guys. Go ahead and hit the ding-dongs for all the notifications so you don't miss a single board being put together. Hope you're having a blessed day wherever you are, guys, and I will see you on the next one. Peace by peace.